Hello there, boys and girls. Happy Friday and welcome to story time. It's exciting. Before we begin today, I hope you guys don't mind, but I have a little surprise for Fluffy. Yeah, it's true, Fluffy. I know you were talking the other day about how much you love treats. Mm hmm, don't we all? And since you've had such a good week, I decided to surprise you with. Yep, they're for you. Would you like to try an M&M? Okay. Remember we talked about being polite, using our manners. We don't just scarf up all the M&Ms, just one or two at a time, okay? Okay. Good job. What do you think? Do you like those? Mm-hmm. Do you want a few more? We probably won't eat the whole bowl today. You were being just so polite. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. Now, should we read some stories? Huh? And we'll put these away for now. Oh, Fluffy. Fluffy. <sighs> Fluffy, that is a big mess. Can you please clean those up? Fluffy, I think you better clean them up. Look, there's hardly any left in the bowl. Oh, Fluffy. Oh boy. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to, all in my lap, I'm going to read some stories to our friends while you clean up this mess. Oh my goodness, say goodbye to your, your friends for now. You'll see them later after you clean up this mess. No, nope, it is not their job to clean up your mess. Ay, yeah, yeah. It's their job to sit and relax and enjoy some stories. All right, off to work you go. And you guys can sit tight and we'll read some. But let me just move my chair through some M&Ms. And we'll get started. Look at this, guys. Mighty Pup Power. 95% sure. Um, I did not read this book because I kind of skimmed it and it, the plot didn't seem very familiar. But if I did, you're about to hear it again. Get situated here. All righty. It was a big day at Adventure Bay Beach because Mayor Humdinger was preparing to blast off in his rocket ship. Ladies and gentlemen, he, he announced, I am about to become the very first mayor on the moon. He whispered to his nephew, Harold, who was in charge of the launch. Quick, I want to lift off before the Paw Patrol gets here and stops my foolproof plan. Just then, Harold accidentally launched the rocket. Excuse me, to be the first mayor on the moon, shouldn't I be in that rocket, said Mayor Humdinger. But the rocket wasn't going to the moon. It was headed right for a meteor. The rocket bumped into the meteor and sent it straight down to Earth. Meanwhile, Everest and Jake were stargazing. They saw the meteor coming toward Ab Adventure Bay. Better call Ryder, said Jake. Ryder, came, Ryder, come in, said Everest. There's a meteor headed this way. Uh-oh, we have to get everyone to safety, said Ryder. Ryder split the pups into two groups. He led one group and Chase had, headed the other. Chase hoped he would be a good leader. Attention Adventure Bay, said Chase through his bullhorn. A meteor is headed toward us. The Paw Patrol cleared the streets just before the meteor crashed right onto the beach. While investigating the meteorite, the Paw Patrol were zapped with a strange energy. Suddenly they had superpowers. Chase was super fast. Rubble was super strong. Sky could fly without wings. Everest could breathe ice. And Marshall could create amazing heat. Zuma's paws could shoot jets of water. And Rocky could make glowing super tools. Wow. 
I'm going to call you Mighty Pups, said Ryder. But it wasn't just the pups who had powers. Harold could make anything he wanted just by moving his hands. He made himself some rocket shoes and zoomed to Mayor Humdinger's lair. That meteorite can make me super mayor, Mayor Humdinger snickered. Harold used his mighty powers to build a super vehicle. They used it to take the meteorite from City Hall. Mayor Goodway quickly called the Paw Patrol. That must be Mayor Goodway, not to be confused with Mayor Humdinger. The Mighty Pups got super pup outfits and then caught up with Mayor Humdinger and Harold. The mayor panicked and escaped the vehicle through a trap door, but Harold continued on his mischievous mission. Using his new meteorite powers, he captured Ryder and his Ryder Hider and then created a giant robot to stop the Mighty Pups. Chase had to take the lead. Zuma, make a mini lake in front of him, and Everest, some ice would be nice. The robot slid on the icy lake and totally wiped out. But then the robot got back up. A little fall won't stop my pup rounder upper, said Harold. Super rocket thrusters coming up. The robot became rocket powered. Using its rocket, the robot quickly caught all the mighty pups except Chase. What would Ryder do, Chase asked himself. Ryder says a good leader never gives up, so neither will I. Oh dear. Mighty pups, I have a plan, said Chase. Mighty Marshall, it's time to go hot dog on these nets. Super idea, team leader Chase, said Marshall, as his paws began to glow red hot. He melted the nets, freeing the pups. Harold piloted his robot to go after team leader Chase. I've got you this time, said Harold, but his helmet fell down over his eyes. Oops, the robot lurched to the lookout and wrapped its arms and legs around it. Its rockets fired and the lookout took off with Ryder trapped inside. We've got to catch up with that rocket ship or we may never see Ryder again, yelped Chase. He quickly formed a plan. Mighty Rocky created an energy tool belt that all the pups could fit inside and Mighty Sky flew them to the lookout. Inside the lookout, Ryder knew the mighty pups had to get to the meteorite to stop the runaway robot, and he knew just how to help them. The pup saw something shining on the robot's backpack. It's the Paw Patrol signal, said Mighty Sky. Chase knew what it meant. It's Ryder, he exclaimed. He's showing us that the meteorite is in the robot's backpack. Let's get that meteorite, said Chase. Rubble, can you reach it? Might be a stretch, said Rubble, but I'll give it a double rubble effort. The powerful pup swung up to the backpack and opened it with his claw arm. Then Mighty Rocky used his super vac to suck up the meteorite. Got it, said Mighty Rocky. Without the meteorite, the robot suddenly lost power and the lookout began to fall. Chase needed a powerful whirlwind to slow it down. On it, said Mighty Sky as she created the super strong spinning wind. The wind slowed the lookout, but it was still falling. Chase used his super speed to make the whirlwind even stronger. He ran faster and faster until the lookout finally slowed and landed right where it belongs. The meteorite stopped glowing. The robot had drained its energy and the mighty pups lost their mighty powers, but they had saved the lookout and Ryder. You all did a great job, pups, said Ryder, especially you, team leader Chase. Thank you for saving Adventure Bay, said Mayor Goodway. Whenever there's mighty trouble, said Ryder, 
Just yell for help. I feel like it should say, and we'll be there on the double. At the end. Next up, we have Curious George and the Pizza Party. George was a good little monkey and always very stinky. Just kidding. Always very curious. Today, he wasn't just curious. He was excited. So excited, in fact, that he was turning flips and standing on his head. A little girl in George's building had invited him to her pizza party. George had never been to a pizza party before, and he loved parties, and he loved pizza, so he knew it had to be good. It says, it's a pizza party Saturday at 4 p.m. in apartment two. George, it's time for the pizza party, said the man with the yellow hat. Have fun, and remember to be on your best behavior. George got to the party in perfect time. Hi, George, called the little girl, but oh, what was all of this? The children were wearing puffy white chef's hats and checkered aprons. George got a hat and an apron too. The best was yet to come. They weren't just getting to, going to eat pizza. They were going to make it too. Everyone will get a piece of pizza dough to roll out and make a special pizza, exclaimed, explained the girl's mother. There were many little lumps of dough. But first, let's play some games, she said. Everyone went into the living room to play pin the pepperoni on the pizza. Everyone, that is, except George. Oh, George. He was curious about those pieces of dough. George thought and thought if lots of little pieces of dough were good, maybe one huge one would be even better. He gathered the lumps of dough together and squished and squashed them until they became the very biggest piece of dough he had ever seen. What fun! Maybe rolling it out would be even more fun. George poured flour out on the table and he rolled and rolled and rolled the dough with a rolling pin. It was messy work. First, he bumped over one of the chairs. Crash! Then he knocked over the sack of flour. Thump! The flour looked like snow lying on the floor of the kitchen. George liked snow, though, so he didn't mind at all. Soon he had gotten the dough nice and thin. Oh my gosh. But the thinner it got, the farther it spread. Before he knew it, dough covered the table, then the chairs, and then George. Without the flour, it started to stick to everything, including George. George stopped to think, uh, maybe the dough was better off in small pieces after all. George got a pair of scissors and began cutting up the dough into lots of different shapes. He thought everyone would be pleased. <gasps> George, what have you done to the kitchen? The little girl's mother did not look very happy. I think it's time for you to go home now. <gasps> How surprised and sad George was. Just then, the children burst into the kitchen and saw the mess that George had made. George, what happened? asked one boy. The other children looked at the shapes George had made with wide eyes. Oh, wow, George, I've never seen pizza dough like that before, said the little girl, smiling. Well, said her mother, if you can clean up this mess quickly, George, I suppose you can still stay and make a pizza. The children all helped George clean the kitchen. He was lucky to have so many good friends. As they worked, they talked about the pizza. I'm going to make a pizza that looks like a star, said one little boy. I'm going to make one that looks like a house, said the girl. Once the kitchen was clean, the real fun began. All of the children picked out perfect pieces of dough 
and got to work. They spooned on tomato sauce and sprinkled on cheese. They added lots of vegetables and pepperoni. The pizzas looked wonderful. One looked like a rainbow, another like a stop sign, and still another like a balloon. There was even a pizza that looked curiously like George. Well, George, said the little girl's mother, the pizzas taste great, and thanks to you, they look wonderful too. Everyone agreed. It was the best pizza anyone had ever seen or tasted. For the second time that day, George was so happy that he turned flips and stood on his head. Of course, it was a little harder to turn flips with so much pizza in his belly, but George didn't mind. It had been a wonderful pizza party. The end. Give you a clue about this one, guys. Beep, beep, beep. Beep. I stink. I haven't used my um, garbage truck voice in a while, guys. I stink. Uh-oh, guys. We have a little missing chunk right here. I'll have to get out some tape. That's what it's supposed to look like. Who am I? I've got lights, 10 wide tires, no AC, not me. I've got doubles, steering wheels, gas pedals, brakes. I'm totally dual op. Know what I do at night while you're asleep? Eat your trash, that's what. See those bags? Ah, smell breakfast. Crew, get me to the curb. Lights, blink. Brakes, squeal. Tailgate, say ah. Feed me. Straight into my hopper. Nice toss, guys. Stop. Yeah, that's the hopper filling up with garbage. Hopper's full. Hit the throttle. Give me some gas. Rev me to the max. Engines roar. Oh, did I wake you? <gasps> Too bad. Pistons, bring on the crusher blade. Blade, push back the bags. Squeeze them, crush them, mash them, smash them. Whoa, those bags are way compacted. Burp! Ah, now I have room for alphabet soup. Get a load of my recipe. Apple cores, banana peels, candy wrappers, dirty diapers, eggshells, fish heads, gobs and gobs of gum. We got half-eaten hot dogs, I icky ice cream cartons. Jam jars, kitty litter, lobster claws, moldy meatballs, nasty neckties, orange peels, puppet poo, and quail bones, too. <gasps> Rotten radishes, smelly sneakers, toothpaste tubes, ugly underpants, vacuum bags, watermelon rinds, extra large t-shirts, year-old yams, and zipped up CD with zucchini. I thank you very much. What's that? You think I stink? Woo, wait. <coughs> Sorry. Do I ever? No skunk ever stunk this bad. Go on, hold your nose, but think about it. Without me? You're on my trash aroma, baby. Yikes. Look at all that trash. Next stop, the river. Lights, flash. Driver, reverse. Get me to the barge. Hear me blast my backup rap. Beep, beep, beep. Hey, beep, beep. Out of my way. <coughs> oh, 
Ready crew action. Pins out. Power takeoff switch. Hit it. Tailgate separate. Up, up, up. Tailgate sweeper. Eject and plop. I'm empty. I'm beat. You're waking up now, but I need some Z's. Back to the garage crew. Hose me down and gas me up. See you tomorrow night, guys. Who am I? The garbage truck, that's who. The end. Now, sticking with our dirty, stinky theme here, we are officially out of Piggy and Gerald books, and we can read, um, turn you guys this way. We can start over and read them again because I know they're wildly popular. So comment in, the, I'm just kidding, don't comment below because I don't understand how YouTube works. Um, but shoot me a text if you want me to um, start a rotation of Piggy and Gerald books again. But in the meantime, I got some new books by the same author, Mo Willems, that writes um, Piggy and Gerald. And he also remember the piggin, the piggin, the pigeon that we see at the end of every uh, Piggy and Gerald book. This is a book about that pigeon. You guys have heard, um, we have Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, but I just got a new one that's called The Pigeon Needs a Bath. I do not. Oh boy. Let's check it out. Hi, I don't know if you've noticed, but the pigeon is filthy. So I could use your help because the pigeon needs a bath. That is a matter of opinion, says the pigeon. Remember this guy, the bus driver, who told us to make sure the pigeon doesn't drive the bus. Now he needs our help getting the pigeon to take a bath. Huh, what a kidder, I don't really need a bath. I took one last month. I uh, think it was last month. Clean, dirty, they're just words, right? I feel clean. Maybe you need a bath. Yeah, when was the last time you had a bath? Oh, that was uh, pretty recently actually. Life is so short. Why waste it on unimportant things like taking a bath? What smell? I don't smell anything. And if I do, it's a very normal smell for a pigeon. You know, in some places it is impolite to bathe. All these flies buzzing around are purely coincidental. Buzz, 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 buzz. Flies like to buzz around dirty things, smelly things. P.U. Yuck. Let's get out of here. Take a bath, dude. Even the flies say it. This guy's too gross. Okay, fine. If it means so much to you, I'll take a bath. Whoa. I am not going to like this one bit. Oh boy, guys, look at He's got a lot of complaints about this bath. The water is too hot, too cold, too lukewarm, too hot, too wet, too cold, not enough toys, too many toys, too deep, not deep enough, too cold. Now it's too hot again, too reflective. That is still too hot. Well, I guess this is okay, finally. I actually think I should have read this all the way across. Let's try that one more time. 
the water is too hot, too cold, too deep, not deep enough, too lukewarm, too hot, too cold. Now it's too hot again, too wet, too cold, too reflective, not enough toys, too many toys. That is still too hot. Well, I guess this is okay. Splash! Hey, this is fun. Wash, 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 wash. La, 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 singing in the tub. This is the life I love, bubbles. Look at my wrinkle like toes. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I am a fish. I am a fish. Ten hours later. Can I stay in the tub forever? <laughs> Totally just changed accents. I have to work on my pigeon voice, guys. Be patient. At the end. Oh, and now we have pigeons in every tub. Except that one. All right, guys. That's it for story time. Um, have a good weekend. And Fluffy and I will see you next week. Love you. Bye.